In this video, we'll be discussing what all options do you have once you get done with your MBA. So I'm sure that you would have heard that people get into managerial roles, leadership positions, entrepreneurship and all those kind of things. So here we'll try to discuss and see what exactly are the options that are available and which one might be the best one for you. So to start with, there are broadly four things that you are going to be able to do once you're done with an MBA. The first thing is functional roles. So a lot of people sit for placements and they get into a lot of functional roles across the various organizations that exist. So that is the first bit. The second thing that we are talking about is entrepreneurship. So if you have an entrepreneurial streak, let's say for example, you have a startup of your own or you are involved in your family business or you want to start something at a later point in time, then all these things count as entrepreneurship. And that is something an MBA will help you with. The third thing that we are talking about is in terms of higher studies that exist. So if you want to say go for a second MBA or you want to study something else in addition to your MBA, then of course the route towards that will be open once you're done with your MBA. And finally, if you want to get into academia or research, even then an MBA could be a good stepping stone. So now let's explore each of these options in some detail. So the first thing that we are looking at here is functional roles. Now, functional roles is basically what happens with a lot of people who go for their MBA from India. Now, what happens during an MBA is that you get exposure to the various aspects of a business, be it in terms of marketing, finance, HR, operations, and so on. So you get a holistic overview of what it means to run a business. And these skills are very important when it comes to large organizations. Now, these organizations will have their various departments and depending on your aspiration, depending on your competence, you will be made a part of one of these departments. Now, broadly speaking, there are various functions that exist for any organization. To start with, we are looking at the sales and marketing function. Now, any organization would want to market itself to the outside world, to its stakeholders, to its customers that they exist. And that is basically where a marketing role will come into the picture, wherein you might be responsible for the branding initiatives that are undertaken by a particular organization. In terms of sales roles, you might be involved in the actual selling of products or services that are created by the organization. So let's say, for example, you might be responsible for figuring out what the estimates look like, what should be the discounts given to the customers. What should be the discounts given to the shopkeepers through whom you are sending your product? So all those things will basically be considered when it comes to the sales and marketing function of an organization. There could be a bit of a research kind of a role as well, wherein you are responsible for developing a particular category as a whole, or you are responsible for developing a channel through which you are supposed to sell the products that you make. So all these kind of roles are a part of sales and marketing. And a lot of FMCGs or FMCDs, as we call them, will have these kind of roles that will be a part of the placement process at your institute. The second function that we are talking about is in terms of finance. Now, finance for an organization is very important purely because the whole objective of floating a business is to earn profits from that particular business. Now that you have got profits, how exactly do you use that money? So that is the answer that the finance team will strive to address. Now, there are a lot of roles when it comes to finance, be it in terms of corporate finance, wherein you are responsible for the inflow and outflow of cash in a particular organization. So if you have surplus money, then what do you do with that money? Do you reinvest it into the organization? Do you try to build capabilities? Do you try to spend something on creating new capital, which is called capital expenditure? How exactly do you use the money that has flown into the system? How exactly do you make money flow into the system? So if you have, say, partners who are a part of your business, how exactly do they contribute to your business? If you have franchises, then how exactly do they pay the fees for your business? So all those things will be a part of corporate finance in one way or the other. Then if you look at private equity, venture capital, so in these scenarios, you are looking at investing money that you have into fresh businesses or even established businesses for that matter. So how exactly do you make your money grow faster? That is basically the objective of a PE or a VC. If you look at investment banking, 
then let's say for example you are an organization who wants to raise a sum of money then what would be the best way for you to raise this capital would it be by getting debt from someone would it be by giving equity to some person how exactly do you go about raising money for an organization let's say for example you want to take over an organization or you want to merge two businesses together then how exactly do you go about it how do you decide a fair price for that kind of a deal so all these questions are addressed by the i banking division now these divisions might be a part of each individual organization or they might be a part of say a bank or a financial institution who would have contracts from the various organizations that exist but if you are someone who is passionate about how money flows into the system and out of the system and how exactly do you make it grow then finance might be the specialization for you so a lot of jobs are available in the finance sector as well then if you look at hr roles that exist so the people that are a part of an organization will probably be its most important resource now how do you encourage these people to do even better how do you get good people on board and once these people are on boarded how exactly do you train them so there are a lot of facets to hr as well including training recruitment compensation and so on so all these could be a part of the hr division of a particular organization so after an mba you can also look at the hr division of an organization and of course as you grow ahead you will be getting more responsibilities pertaining to the hr then if you are looking at operations and supply chain as a whole you will again be getting roles in the operations and supply chain management divisions of organizations now the operations team and the supply management team will look at estimating how exactly the demand is coming to you they will be taking crucial decisions whether you want to manufacture something in house or you want to outsource those things how exactly do things move along the value chain so if you want to have a hub wherein your entire finished goods will come and from there it will be distributed to individual outlets let's say for example where exactly should this be present what is the optimum way of moving things from one place to the other so all those questions will be answered by the operations and the supply chain management team now if you look at the next role that you can aspire for that will be in the form of a consultant now as a consultant you are expected to have two critical attributes one is you should have good problem solving skills because as a consultant you will be dealing with a lot of problems a lot of issues a lot of projects that will come your way being a part of an organization you also need to have some expertise in terms of the industry so for example if you are an ites consultant then you need to have an expertise in terms of what all trends are there in the it sector what would be the best way to address a problem for a particular organization if you are say a part of the bfsi industry then you need to have a good hold on how the bfsi industry works you might also want to look at technology media telecom and all those kind of things if you want to become a consultant so being a consultant you will probably have industrial expertise as well you will be well versed with a particular industry you would have worked at a lot of places or you would have gained a lot of experience in a particular industry and then you will basically become an expert as you progress you might be elevated to the position of a principal a director or a partner so that is the end goal when it comes to consulting finally if you are looking at roles in it or business analytics or data science so these roles are slightly more technical in nature wherein you are trying to make sense of a lot of data that comes to you specifically in terms of business analytics and then you figure out how is it correlated to the business that is going to happen so you might get a lot of data you have to figure out what all things are critical in that data what all things have a direct impact what all things might have an indirect impact on the business and then you have to formulate strategies which will help the business grow faster so these are primarily the roles that you get after an mba so as a consultant you might also get a, an expertise in say marketing or finance or hr or operations so those are also the intersections that are possible but broadly if you are looking at career options after an mba we are looking at these six major functional roles that exist now in terms of the second bit which is entrepreneurship now this is again something that has taken off over the last few years and either people will have an existing business either it will be their own business that they would have floated before they go for an mba or it would be a family business that 
they would have inherit they might also want to start a business immediately after their mba so all these options are open in terms of entrepreneurship now you should be resourceful if you want to become an entrepreneur you should have shown that enterprising flair before you go for an mba if you wish to become an entrepreneur because those things definitely help you in again cementing your decision that you want to become an entrepreneur now a lot of b schools offer a lot of encouragement to budding entrepreneurs and we'll try to see as to how exactly an mba will help you become an entrepreneur so the first thing that a lot of b schools have is this concept of a placement holiday now a placement holiday is nothing but if let's say for example you wish to float a venture of your own then you are allowed to sign out of the placement process that exists but that is not going to be the end of the story let's say for example after a couple of years you decide that okay entrepreneurship was not something that was right for you at that point in time and you need some security in terms of a job then you can approach the b school after a couple of years and sit for the placement process with the outgoing batch so that is a luxury that is given to a lot of students who pass out of of top b schools because being an entrepreneur carries with it some risk and you get a sort of a net so that in case things go south you will be able to avail the placement holiday if you look at the encouragement from the b schools that exist there is this thing called incubation centers now incubation centers are nothing but there is a bit of brainstorming that is involved in terms of again sharpening the idea that you have in your mind there will be teachers there will be senior people who will be involved in this decision making process if you build a business model on your own then they will be able to verify whether your business model is sound or not so all those things happen at the incubation centers and this exchange of ideas will make sure that you have fine tuned your business idea before you go live and that is a very important part of your mba setup that you get access to these incubation centers now in terms of funding as well there are a lot of alumni from top institutes who will be interested in funding budding entrepreneurs so there are a lot of activities that happen there are a lot of meetups that happen wherein alumni will interact with the present students or with budding entrepreneurs who are pass outs of a particular b school and then they will get a platform to showcase their idea and ask for funding in lieu of equity so these things again keep on going on in an ongoing basis and being a part of a top b school you will get access to these kind of initiatives as well also if you have a good brand name on your cv in terms of your b school then that makes your life even easier if you approach someone in terms of funding so if you are already a pass out of a top tier b school in india let's say and you go to someone an individual investor or an entire entity and organization and ask for funding you might find it slightly easier with a good brand name backing you up so those are the advantages that you get in terms of funding now if you look at networking opportunities so lot of times you will have an idea which you would want to implement right away but you also need a lot of like minded people to be participants in your business so b school is a good place wherein you will see a lot of other people who will have similar expertise to what you have or will have complementary skill sets and that will help you build and grow your business so b schools will offer a lot of networking opportunities for you to evaluate your business and again deliver at every point in time so be it in the form of brainstorming of ideas be it in the form of funding be it in the form of getting partners be it in the form of mergers you will get a lot of opportunities in terms of networking as well and finally if you look at it let's say you don't want to become an entrepreneur today you just want to test the waters a bit do your primary job and then maybe at a later point in time say after 8 or 10 years you want to become an entrepreneur even that is something that an mba will help you with because being a part of a b school will help you gain functional expertise it will give access to network you will be working in an organization in the capacity of a a manager or a leader and that will help you build a business on your own at a later point in time as well so that is something that will help you in terms of your long term goal of entrepreneurship as well just that if you are thinking about entrepreneurship as a long term goal also think about the opportunity cost that comes with it because if you are not implementing your idea for the next 8 or 10 years there might be other people who might be keen on taking it 
and that's why it's recommended that if you have an idea which you firmly believe in and if you have validated it with proper research then you should go live as soon as you can when it comes to the next option in terms of higher studies there are two broad things that you can do the first is you can either go for a phd and get into research or academia and the second thing is you can go for a second mba from abroad at a later point in time now in terms of phd what you can do is after your mba or your pgdm you can go for opportunities like a phd or an fpm from institutes which will introduce you to the world of academia so let's say you want to become a professor of say economics for example or if you want to teach marketing to aspiring marketeers or to aspiring managers then you will be able to do that once you have a phd as well so that will add a lot of value to your candidature you will be able to participate in research you will be able to write papers on your own or contribute to corporates in the form of individual projects as well so all those opportunities are open once you go for your phd after your mba now there are a few people who pursue this route but if you are one of them definitely this is a possibility the second bit is a lot of people go for a second mba at a later point in time maybe after 8 10 12 years of their first mba now why do people do it because if you look at it things are changing very rapidly now compared to what they used to earlier so every decade you will have new technologies that come up new roles that open new industries that take shape and you have to be updated in terms of content in terms of expertise when it comes to having a long term career so few people would want to enhance their first mba by having a second mba after say 10 years of their first mba and then they would want to explore larger responsibilities so one it will help them climb to the top management level in a quicker manner because of the second mba the second thing is let's say for example you want to settle abroad you want to go to a different country and then pursue a career there then that could be another way of getting into that particular country and figuring out the relevant roles that exist there so a lot of people do that now in addition to all these things that we have mentioned there are a few people who will pursue their interests outside of the corporate so we have had people who are sports commentators we have had people who are movie directors we have had people who are editors so all these career choices are open So if you have a passion about something I'm sure that a management education will add to your passion it will give you a good perspective in terms of how things work it will give you skills that you will be able to replicate into the industry or the domain of your choice and that will help you pursue a long term career so these were all the options that were there after your mba we hope that you pursue the option that is most suited to you and have a long and fulfilling career all the best